Hi ChemStars, today we're going to look at our chapter 7 notes, an intro to ionic naming. So um, yesterday in class we should have covered some of the ion formation, but we'll do a quick review of that here. So looking at 7.1, chemical names and formulas, we're going to be looking at monatomic ions. So let's break that down. Prefix mon or mono means one or single, and then atomic means atom. So a monatomic ion is a single atom that has a positive charge or a negative charge. And let's use some of our good vocab words. Positively charged ions are called cat ions. They have a positive charge. And negatively charged ions are called anions. Remember, onions or anions make you cry. It's negative. So there are some things that will always form certain charges. Group 1 will always form a 1 plus charge because they have one valence electron and they will always lose it. Group 2, they have two valence electrons. They'll always lose them and form a 2 plus. And then aluminum has three valence and it will always form a three plus charge. So if you look at your periodic table, I would label these things if you have not. So everything in column one is a one plus, everything in column two is a two plus, and then silver, or not silver, aluminum, aluminum is special, and aluminum will always be a three plus. So aluminum will always be three plus. So just take a second and make sure you've written those things on your periodic table. Okay, let's talk about some of the anions. So these are the nonmetals that will gain electrons. Their names will end in I, D, E. So group 15, those have five valence and they want to get to eight. So they will always gain three more and form a three minus charge. Group 16 has six valence. It will gain two more electrons and form a two minus charge. Group 17 is just one valence electron from being a noble gas. And it will always um, gain one and be a one minus. Group 18, no charge. If they look at your periodic table, we kind of see this pattern right here. Group 18, noble gases, has no charge. Column 17 wants to gain one more electron, becomes a 1 minus. Column 16 becomes a 2 minus. And column 15 becomes a 3 minus. Okay, but what about everything else on the periodic table? So when we've been going through these units, we've always said, oh, the D block has like two valence electrons. We'll put that in quotes. We're going to actually explore that now and try and figure out what um, charges those transition metals will form. So the charges of the cations of many transition metal ions must be determined by the number of electrons lost. That just means we have to do some work. So for example, if we have iron that lost two electrons, it means we're subtracting a negative two, that's going to be a two plus charge. What if iron lost three electrons? That's going to be minus a negative three, that's going to be a three plus charge. It turns out these both exist, and you can find both of them in the real world. So iron 2 plus exists, and iron 3 plus exists. This it might sound a little bit complicated, but don't worry, because the naming's really easy. Iron that lost 2, we actually just call it iron 2. The only tricky part is we use Roman numerals. And iron that's lost 3 electrons has a 3 plus charge, we call it iron 3. So just make sure you understand basic Roman numerals. One, two, three, four, and we'll go up to five. Why not? So Roman numeral one is one line. Roman numeral two, we just use two lines. Roman numeral three is three lines. Let me skip to five. Five is a V. Now four is actually IV. So when we put that line in front of the V, it means one less than five. So in Roman numerals, we write four as one less than five. So make sure you're familiar with these Roman numerals. Okay, there are three exceptions though, and you have to memorize these. So you need to know that cadmium, symbol CD, will always be a 2 plus. Zinc, ZN, will always do, be a 2 plus. And then silver, AG, will also always be a 1 plus. 1 plus. So you need to memorize these. Okay, super important. You have to know these. Okay, so let's take a look at that periodic table then so you can see some more color coding. So everything column one always one plus, plus silver is always a one plus. Everything in column two is always a two plus, plus zinc and cadmium are always two plus. And then everything else in the D block, the transition metals, they need Roman numerals. Plus, also make a note, tin and lead need Roman numerals. I know they're not in the D block, but they have those D orbitals, so they'll do some of these funny electron things. Okay, and how do we name these? You might think that CD2 plus would be cadmium 2 because that would make sense. 
It's not. We just call it cadmium. You might think that zinc with a, always that two plus charge would be zinc two. It's not. We just call it zinc. And same thing for silver. It's not silver one. We just call it silver because the other forms don't exist. So cadmium, zinc, and silver, they don't need Roman numerals because they always form these charges. Let's talk about some of the polyatomic ions. Um, if you're in level one, you have memorized these. If you're in level two, we're going to be giving you those sheets. So polyatomic ions, they have longer formulas. Um, most, but not all, will end in the endings eight or right. And um, if you've been memorizing these, you'll kind of see the pattern. Eights always have more oxygen than eight. There's the example also of hydroxide and cyanide. So you will get a list. So level two chem, you will have a list. level one chem, you've already memorized these. Okay, let's flip the page. So let's talk about binary ionic compounds. Now that we talked about the ions, let's see the compounds we can make from them. So the prefix bi, bi means two. So binary means two. Ionic, that means a charged particle or a charged atom. So we have charged, it can be a plus or it can be a minus. Okay, so let's talk about the metals. We really want to make sure we understand this. Group 1, group 2, and aluminum always have certain charges. So group 1 is always a 1 plus. Group 2 is always a 2 plus. And aluminum is always a 3 plus. For our nonmetals, to the right of the stair step line, noble gases have no charge. They won't form compounds. Now, if you remember Vesper, you know, we can force some of the heavier noble gases to form compounds with fluorine, but we won't talk about that right now. Halogens, that's column 17. So they will always form the one minus charge. Oxygen and sulfur are in column 16. They are always a two minus. Nitrogen and phosphorus are in column 15. They're always your three minus. So here is our goal. The whole point is to have the negative charges and the positive charges. What do you think? We want them to equal out. Maybe you'd say in math class, we want them to cancel. So we want the net charge to equal zero. So the whole goal is that we have the same negative as the same positive. So how can we do this? There's a couple ways. So let's try the crisscross method first. So the first question you ask yourself is, do the positive and negative charges already cancel each other out? If yes, you just write down the formula with no subscript. If no, then we'll crisscross the charges for the other subscript. So here's an example. If we took magnesium, which is a two plus and oxygen, which is a two minus, they already cancel each other out. So if we have a positive two and we add a negative two, it equals zero. That means we need just one magnesium for every one oxygen. The formula is just MgO. You can think about it, it's like M1, Mg1O1, but just like in math class, we don't need to write the one. So in math class, you know that one X is the same thing as X. The one is implied, so we don't write those ones. Now let's look at our next example, Mg2 plus and Cl1 minus, a plus two and a minus one, we end up with a plus one. If they don't cancel out, so we have to do a crisscross. So here's what we do. Simple thing is take the two, put it here, take the chlorine, put it here. That one from the chlorine, so Mg1Cl2. What this means is I need one magnesium, for every two chlorines. And if we sketch this out, okay, so if we draw out like a visualization of that formula, you see that we have one magnesium with a two plus, and then we have two chlorines with a one minus. So we've got a two minus and we've got a two plus, and that's gonna equal out to zero. So everything's good. So you can either do it by doing a simple crisscross, or what we're really doing here is finding the least common multiple to get to zero for a positive and negative charge. So let's flip the page again. So let's simplify those rules for naming. So rules for naming. Name the cation first. That's the positive one. And that's usually going to be a metal. And then we're going to name the anion, which is the negative charged ion. And that's usually going to be your nonmetal. And we just have to make sure we switch that ending to end with IDE. So if we have NaCl, the cation here is sodium. Na is sodium. And the anion is chlorine. Cl, but remember, we've got to switch the ending from chlorine to chloride. Put all that together, the name for NaCl will be sodium chloride, and that is table salt. 
let's try that with another one. So let's take MgO. The cation Mg is magnesium. So we just say that. And O is oxygen. But remember, instead of oxygen, we're going to change it to IDE. So it'll be magnesium oxide. That's the whole name. So to practice those new skills, let's look at this table. Um, so we have a workspace, we have the correct formula, and the correct name. In each column, we have two elements. We have sodium and oxygen, lithium and bromine, calcium and fluorine, barium and sulfur, and then aluminum and nitrogen. So let's go through and get them set up. I'll do one with you, and then you'll have, the, have you pause the video, and then come back and check your work. So for the first one, sodium is our cation. It's in column one, so it's always going to be a one plus. Oxygen is the anion. It's in column two. It's always going to be a two minus. So you can do a crisscross, or you can just write them out. So if we have Na one plus and we have oxygen two minus, if you look, they don't cancel. So here's the way we can kind of visualize it. I've got a two minus on this side. I've got to get a two plus on this side. So I'm actually going to need two sodiums. So I've got a one plus and a one plus. That gives me a two plus, and I've got a two minus. So when I write that formula, it's going to be Na2O. And the name is going to be sodium oxide. So you can actually draw out the ions, or you can just do a crisscross and change the superscript into the subscript. So let me set up the other column. I want you to try them on your own, and we'll come back. So lithium and bromine. Lithium is in column one. It's a one plus. Bromine is in column 17. It's a one minus. Calcium's in column two, it's a two plus. Fluorine's in column 17, it's going to be a one minus anion. Barium, column two, so it's two plus. Sulfur, column 16, it's a two minus. And then we've got aluminum, which is always a three plus, and nitrogen is always a three minus. So I've given you all the ions. I want you to pause the video now, try these on your own, making sure that your endings end with ide. You don't have to write the one for the formula. And good luck. Use your periodic table. Thank you for pausing your video and then going on these problems on your own. Let's check your work now. So if we have lithium 1 plus and bromine 1 minus, they've got the same charge. We just need one of each to cancel out. So your formula is LIBR. Name is lithium bromide. Make sure you change your ending from bromine to bromide. Next one, calcium and fluorine. 2 plus and 1 minus, those don't cancel. You can do a quick crisscross. So calcium's charge 2 becomes the number of fluorine you need. Fluorine's charge one becomes the number of calcium you need. And that one right here is implied. You don't have to write it. So calcium fluoride, CaF2. Then we've got barium and sulfur. We see two plus and two minus. They cancel. We just need one of each to have a net charge of zero. If you did crisscross and you did Ba2S2, you can see it's kind of redundant. So we always want to have these in the most reduced form. So if I see two and two, I can reduce that down to one and one, and we don't write the one. So it's just BAS for barium sulfide. And the last problem we have is aluminum and nitrogen. So we have aluminum three plus, nitrogen three minus. We just need one of each because a plus three and a minus three, that equals out to zero. So those cancel. The formula is ALN, and the name is aluminum nitride. Okay, so we're going to stop there for now, and then our next video will pick up with writing some of those trickier names which have the transition metals with those Roman numerals.